If you want to get somewhere quickly within Japan, a high-speed passenger express will help you do that. This engineering marvel created after World War II. It has carried more than 10 billion passengers at 320 kilometers per hour and helped create the world's third largest economy. But that's not enough for Japan, and the country is currently building the fastest passenger train in the world, a system that will move twice as fast as modern high-speed trains and cut travel time in half by eliminating one rather fundamental component, wheels. By using magnetic levitation, these new trains will hover 10 centimeters above the ground, eliminating the friction created by contact with the rails. But the new line has sparked intense controversy, battling delays, skyrocketing construction costs, and fierce debates over environmental issues. Now, as the project nears completion, the world is waiting to see if the project succeeds in hovering over its problems and making a significant leap in transportation, or if it will fall short. Japan was the first country in the world to develop high-speed railway, building the Tokaido Shinkansen line between Tokyo and Osaka in 1959. At that time, both the Japanese and the rest of the world were skeptical of the country's massive investments in railway infrastructure, with many believing it would soon become obsolete in the exciting new era of air travel and highways. However, in October 1964, the first high-speed line was opened just in time for the first Tokyo Olympics. This reduced the travel time between the two largest cities in Japan from merely seven hours to just under four. Demonstrating instant success, the line served over 100 million passengers in less than three years. The same trip on a modern superfast express now takes two and a half hours. When the new Chuo Shinkansen line is completed, it will take only 67 minutes. At full speed, the Chuo Shinkansen trains will travel at 500 kilometers per hour. Although a test run in 2015 set a world record of 603 kilometers per hour, it is now widely recognized that conventional high-speed trains cannot achieve such speeds. They are all eventually limited by the friction created by their wheels. To solve this problem, Japanese engineers turned to a technology that has been in use since the beginning of the 20th century, magnetic levitation, also known as maglev. In fact, the concept of maglev trains dates back to the 1960s, and the world's first, and so far only, commercial maglev line has been in operation since 2004, running between downtown Shanghai and its airport. The Central Japan Railway Company has further advanced this technology by using superconducting magnets. The electromagnets are cooled to minus 269 degrees Celsius, allowing the trains to hover higher above the tracks. However, the trains must reach a certain speed before the magnets engage. Once the train reaches a speed of 150 kilometers per hour, the magnetic suspension is activated and the car is removed from its rubber wheels. The train then interacts with a set of coils on the tracks, one of which is used to levitate its mass and the other to propel itself forward. Now without wheels, the carriages can move at incredible speeds. The trains are also fully autonomous, guided by the tracks rather than a driver, a measure claimed to reduce the risk of collisions or accidents. The Tokyo and Nagoya line has been under construction since 2014 and is expected to open in 2027. The next extension connecting Tokyo to Osaka will begin immediately after that and is scheduled to open as early as 2037, 10 years ahead of schedule. Unlike existing high-speed trains that run along the coast of Japan, the Chuo Shinkansen will be 90% underground passing under the Southern Alps. Of the 285-kilometer section, 256 kilometers will be in tunnels. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, maglev trains perform better when traveling in a straight line, and digging under mountains avoids Japan's more earthquake-prone coastline. Although taking this approach, Central Japan Railway ended up digging some of the deepest tunnels ever seen in Japan. This has caused a number of environmental problems, especially in Shizuoka Prefecture, where tunnel construction threatens the Kumano River, the main water source in the region. While environmental studies have shown a low risk of basin disruption, local authorities have criticized these reports as being insufficient and hasty. The incumbent governor of Shizuoka even campaigned against the railway, winning the elections in June 2021, with the Tokaido Shinkansen being a key issue. This controversy combined with unexpected obstacles in the construction of new stations, increased the cost of the project from $13.7 billion to a staggering $64 billion, making it one of the most expensive mega-projects ever implemented in the country. The high price tag has led many in Japan to question whether this new line is worth it at all. Indeed, this Japanese mega-project has a few drawbacks. Once completed, these kinds of trains will be more expensive to operate than conventional high-speed trains as they consume more energy. While you may argue that they would contribute to greater environmental growth, they would also be limited in terms of passenger capacity in their smaller carriages and frequency of travel. Traditional superfast trains run on the Tokyo-Osaka line approximately every three minutes. Since the switches on maglev tracks take more time, a maglev train can only be launched every 10 minutes. Japanese railway companies have also been able to generate significant revenue by exporting their technologies abroad. 
But since the first superfast train was introduced in 1964, a notable new player has entered the scene, China. Now China is the king of high-speed rail, with two-thirds of the world's high-speed network located in the country. However, none of its intercity lines use maglev technology. China has started developing its own version of these technologies. In July 2021, it tested a maglev train that reached a speed of 600 kilometers per hour, nearly breaking the record set by Japan. Theoretically, this train could get from Beijing to Shanghai in three and a half hours, faster than the four and a half hours by plane. While China doesn't need to rely on Japanese technology, the rest of the developed world is still trying to catch up with conventional high-speed rail. So why is Japan so determined to build this maglev line? If this mega project is successful, it has the potential to create next-generation logistics between the two largest cities in the country, linking the region between Tokyo and Osaka quite firmly. Such a merger of major cities could create powerful economic centers on an unprecedented scale. But there is an obstacle. Shizuoka Prefecture has not issued permission for the construction of a 9-kilometer tunnel on its territory. The Ue River runs through the prefecture, with its source in the Southern Alps. Studies have shown that the construction of the tunnel will cause groundwater that feeds the river to flow to the tunnel. As a result, the river will become less abundant. Shizuoka Governor Kawakatsu Haida expressed concerns about the potential environmental impacts of the project, saying it is totally because of the water issues. Water is of the utmost importance to us, and if they construct a train tunnel through the Southern Alps, they say two tons per second will be lost. More than 600,000 people depend on this water. It is the lifeblood of the prefecture. When the Superfast Passenger Express first began construction more than half a century ago, the world ridiculed it, but eventually it enabled Japan to launch its strongest economic growth, connecting regions and sharing prosperity. In the decades that followed its opening, Japan transformed from an economy that was only 10% the size of the United States into one of the world's most powerful economies. A private research institute has estimated an economic impact of $105 billion for the entire country over the first 50 years, assuming operation starts in 2027. And if we talk only about the Tokai region, there will be new business with a total value of about $19 billion. Long-term mega-projects always come with risks, especially considering the fact that social circumstances can significantly change over an extended period of time. But as is often the case, it's the taxpayers who will have to pay the bills. In conclusion, Japan's ambition to build the fastest passenger train in the world could challenge other countries as well. This ambitious project has the potential to revolutionize transportation, improve connectivity between major cities, and stimulate economic growth. Furthermore, Japan's success in developing high-speed rail technology has positioned it as a global leader in the transportation industry. If this project proves successful, it may inspire other countries to invest in such groundbreaking infrastructure, which will eventually contribute to economic growth, stimulate innovations, and create new opportunities for global connectivity and collaboration. Write in the comments what do you think about this crazy new Japanese mega project. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also check out our previous videos. See you later.